Would you like to upgrade the framework or database, but it seems impossible due to high coupling? And maybe you think about rewriting the project from scratch again? In front of you is Damian Jaduch, a professional programmer since 2011, all the time in PHP. He will convince us that framework agnostic is not a rocket science. Let's listen to Damian and his talk. Uh, before we start, I want to ask a question. Is there anybody uh, in the room who speaks only English? Yes. Okay, so we will do in English. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do in English. I just want to confirm. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are not tired yet because there is a lot of stuff going on uh, today. And thank you for joining me in this talk. And in this talk, as, I, as it was said before, I want to convince you that framework agnostic approach is not a rocket science. And in order to do so, I would like to present you our approach to this subject. So this talk will be based on uh, experiences from uh, the company which I'm working currently in, and this is Printify. So let's begin. I, I will start with uh, presenting myself a bit because maybe you're not familiar with them. I started my let's say, career as a public speaker this year. And here we are. I'm also, of course, a software engineer. I'm working at the Printify. And the Printify is a company with the mission. Our mission is to change the world. We want to transform the world from uh, mass production into on-demand production. And before that, I was also working in uh, two companies, uh, local ones, uh, which were, were also a product company. So I have a uh, background with the product companies. And uh, I'm also a fan of uh, TDD and architecture, and both topics will be covered in this presentation. So let's take a look what will be in this presentation. So let's take a look at agenda. So first I want to answer uh, the question, what is framework agnostic approach? Then I want to show you why you should care, why you should do this. Finally, maybe not finally, but on the third, uh, I want to name the benefits that this approach will give you. And finally, I want to show you in details how we are doing. And there will be uh, maybe not live coding, but I will show you some code. So start with the definition. So what is framework agnostic? So the definition from the internet is like this. It's a Framework uh, agnostic approach, approach uh, refers to developing software in a way that minimizes dependencies on specific framework. Quite long, but I think we can do a bit more simple. It's just separation. We separate the framework from our application code. We have a abstraction over our application. So the framework is separated. Okay, so now you may be thinking, hmm. Okay, why, why, why should you care? Why should I do it? So my answer will be, I will show you some code. I hope it will be visible. Uh, and as you can see, this is typical HTTP controller. <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, for example, this is a controller. We have some entities. So we have some uh, DB connection here, some HTTP handling, JSON responses, some domain logic here is. So everything is mixed here. And as you may guess, uh, maintaining such code is not a pleasant experience, of course. Uh, everything is tightly coupled. So now I, wanna, I have a question to you. What do you think? How, how hard would be test such class? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I imagine like setup method would be like super long because you have to like start ker uh, kernel uh, of the framework. You have to uh, stop the HTTP response. You have to put some uh, stuff into database. So a lot of stuff needs to be done in order to test this. And also, it contains a lot of. Uh, edge cases, so there has to be like uh, a lot of uh, data providers maybe, so the test will be quite heavy and quite long, and it will take a lot of time, of course, to execute and to run. So we want to uh, not do it. 
Okay, so now let's maybe name those things, what this approach exactly gives you. So somebody might change, okay, I can change the framework, framework is separated, but uh, in reality, if who changes framework like, oh, maybe I will ask you, uh, who changed the framework like from, for example, from Lalaver to Symfony or something else? Oh, there is somebody. Interesting, okay. <laughs> But as you can see, this is a very rare case. So we should not focus on this. Uh, of course, yes. So let's name those benefits. So the benefits are like, first, I think it's separations of concerns. So this, this approach will give you uh, the order in your code. Something which, uh, similar which uh, Michał showed in his presentation about DDD, we will have a places like directories where we can put everything in the code. You will, you will know where to put the stuff. Uh, besides that, uh, I mentioned the tests. So the tests will be much faster and they will be much, uh, I think, easier to write. So easy to write and also uh, fast by uh, execution time. The last thing what, uh, which I want to mention here is uh, code reusability. We use uh, services or use cases, and it's uh, super fine because we can reuse them. For example, we had a case uh, where we first started a service, we implemented a HTTP method, but then we figure out that, hey, we, wa we wanna do the same thing on some event, and uh, we wanna do this uh, via CLI command. So we, uh, with, by this approach, we were able to do it very, very fast. Okay, so now, this is the last part of my presentation, but it's the longest, uh, because now I want to show you how we are doing it. So, but before I jump to a code, I want to first talk, of course, about the domain. So uh, in this sample application that I want to show, there is a driver's penalty point system in Poland. I think many of you might be familiar because I think a lot of people drive by a car, by a car here or they have having license, they are familiar. So what are the rules of that um, system, of this domain? So for the fresh driver, let's say, for junior driver, let's call him like this, junior driver, uh, he's allowed to have 20 penalty points uh, limit because he uh, passed the exam less than one year ago. And for the senior drivers, there is a limit, 24 points. So up to 20, 24 points, you can still drive. If you reach it, you cannot drive it anymore. Okay, so speaking of the penalty itself, uh, the penalty itself is valid two years, two years. And this period is counted from the day of the payment. So when the driver pays the payment. And when the driver can the payment for the, uh, sorry, can the pay for the penalty. Uh, so the driver had two options. Either he can pay on the spot, uh, to the police officer, here is my card or cash, take it. Uh, or he can decide, okay, just give me the uh, bank account number and I will pay later. So, and he forgot so about it, of course, and then he pays like half of a year later, and then the penalty is finally like two and a half year valid. And the last trail rule in this system is imagined by me. So if you reach the limit, you instantly go to the jail. So this is the rule which is in the system, which is not a real uh, rule, of course. So let's quickly uh, discuss the users of uh, our system. Of course, we have a police officer who can do one thing. He can impose a penalty on the uh, driver. And besides the police officer, we have the uh, driver, of course and the driver can pay for the penalty, one action. Okay, and uh, now I wanna mention the architecture which we are using. This is sports and adapter architecture. So, uh, and the question I have, well, oh, I have no question for now, right now. Who knows or uses uh, ports and adapters or hexagonal architecture? Yeah, nice, nice, good one. Okay, so the definition of it is, uh, it aims at creating loosely coupled application components that can be easily connected to the software environment by means of ports and adapters. 
So we have ports and adapters, but what does it mean? We can simplify this, of course. It's a separation of the framework of the tooling by means of those ports and adapters. So the ports and adapter are the tool which allows our application to be separated from the framework. And I have a also small disclaimer here. This, we think that this is not the only uh, approach to framework agnostic. Uh, this is just our approach. Okay, so before uh, we jump into the code, I want to do a view, like a helicopter view of uh, this project. So what, we, what I will do now is step by step show you how we will implement the code in this uh, system. So where do we start? So this is, will be similar to uh, Michal's presentation about DDD. We, don't start, we do not start with uh, HTTP payloads or with uh, DB schemas. No, we are not interested in that. We are interested in our domain, so in those rules, in those penalties, how they are valid on the, in those points. This is the thing which we have to uh, implement as the first. So we do it as a first, and we will have uh, classes like representation of the penalty, for example, and we will have a representation of the driver, and we will call it the driver file. So this will be an aggregate which contains all the penalties of the driver. And we first define it. So what we have to do later? We define application on top of dom our domain. So what is app application? Application is uh, something which orchestrates, which uses our domain. And as you can see on this picture, we have those things to the, here. Those are, those are called get driver file and store driver file. So this might be similar to you uh, to the repository pattern from the DDD book, but we uh, divide the repositories into uh, more granular interfaces because we follow a SIP rule from the solid. Uh, uh, ISP, sorry, interface segregation principle. Uh, and we, this allows us to connect with the storage. So our application now consists of the domain, of course, domain is inside, it's the core, and we have the application. So what is this application? We have the service. service. We have two services because our uh, application now is able to do two things. We can first impose the penalty on the driver, and second thing, the driver can pay for its penalty. So we have two services which allows the users to do so. And of course, we need storage. So we define storage with these interfaces. So what are those interfaces? Those interfaces are in the application, application and they are owned by the application. Uh, but the application itself on this stage does not care how the uh, persistence is done, how it's those uh, things are stored. We don't care about that fact now. So we only need those interfaces. We can quite easily test our application now by just stabbing those interfaces, for example, or providing some in-memory representation. So this is application. And now let's uh, jump forward. Now something changed. So as you can see, besides our application, outside of our application, we have something new. We have adapters. So there is in memory adapter, mock adapter. Uh, so what are these? So those are the concrete implementation. Concrete implementation in this case of the storage. So for the storage, we have two uh, implementation. One, we have in memory uh, implementation and mock implementation of the storage. So why this is outside of our application, you might be asking. Because we want to have this uh, abstraction over our application. We don't want to have coupling between storage and our application. And by these ports, we are able to do so. Because those, uh, yeah, the, those uh, interfaces are called ports, ports in our application. 
So we define in our application that, hey, we want to have storage, but we don't care how it's working under the hood. And the implementation lives outside of our application. And now you might be wondering, OK, so uh, how, how I connect it? So I do it via dependency injection container, of course, because we don't want to have direct coupling. We want to wire things on the dependency injection. And by doing on the dependency injection level, I can switch the implementation of the storage, maybe not on the fly, but I can very easily switch it because it uh, implements this interface. So if I would add here another implementation, like MySQL, for example, I can very easily change that, just change the in the DI, and voila, we are done. OK, so now we have the application, which is allowed, uh, able to do store something in the storage. Uh, we have the domain. So what's next? And what next? We would like to have our application to be used by somebody. Because currently, we have just a service. There is no like HTTP controller or CLI command or whatever. So how to do it? So what we do, we define another pair of ports. But they are on the different side. Bec why they are on the different side? Because the traffic comes from the left side to the right. So those ports define the capabilities of our application. Now, right now, this application is simple. It, can, it uh, has two capabilities. It has a capability we can impose the penalty on the driver, and we, the, we can also pay for the penalty for the driver. OK, so we define the port. But where are those controllers, let's say, or those CLI commands? Well, they are also not in the application. They are, of course, outside of the application. So the application itself owns this contract, this port, and it says, OK, via this port, you can, uh, in this application, do something. But where, where is the implementation of this port, you might be asking? So the implementation of this port is in the application. It's implemented by the service, because service can do so. So our, uh, our service implements the interface, the, this port. So we have a service which allows, for example, to impose the penalty. And there is a contract for that. There is a port for that. OK, so now we have uh, uh, interfaces. We have services which use those interfaces, which implement those interfaces. So who is the user of this interface? Who is using it? Of course, it's adapters. So for example, let's imagine this adapter, this HTTP adapter, which allows the driver to pay for the penalty. So how it's done? Uh, this adapter will have injected the I, this, uh, it, 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 it has dependency to this, uh, to this port, to this pay penalty. But on the DI level, it's wired to the ser service. So the adapter does not have direct coupling to the service because the adapter does not care how the application logic works, how the paying is done, or how the imposing is done. So this is from the big perspective. So now uh, what I want to show you is, of course, the code. OK, you don't see it. Hold on. Let me just quickly change it. <laughs> Maybe this way. OK. Hmm. Hold on. I wanted to switch to mirroring settings. But how to do it? Not sure. OK, never mind. Let's do it like as it is. All right now, where is the cursor? OK, so how we, wanna go, how, how we are going to do it? Oh, why well, it's not working? Oh, there is. So I created this code, and there is four branches. I want to go with you step by step into those branches, so they represent the steps which i shown you on this diagram. So let's start, of course, with the domain, because this is what we wanted. And I have a question. Is the font readable for you? This is presentation mode, so I think it should be. OK. So 
let's take a look at the folder structures maybe first. So as you can see, we have only in the source code, we have only domain. We don't have anything else. We don't have controls. We don't have storage. We don't care about it on, on in the domain. So first, we distill our domain. So as you can see, we have the class which represents the penalty. So this is the penalty which can be imposed on the driver. As you can see, we have like some identification numbers and some other data of it. And of course, as I said, we can create unpaid penalty. And of course, oh, oh, sorry, it's hard to do it like this. And we have paid on the spot. So there, there are some other rules, like we can pay the penalty, but the penalty can be already paid. We can check whether penalty is valid and whether it's paid. So this is simple class that represents the penalty. There is nothing sophisticated. It's pure uh, PHP object. And besides that, we also have the aggregate. The aggregate, which is a driver file. And the driver file, of course, consists of penalties. So every penalty which is imposed on the driver goes to his file. And of course, it's done via behavior. We have the behavior here. So we, have, we can impose the penalty, of course. There is some exception which can be thrown when the driving li license is val not valid anymore. Um, we can either pay for, for the penalty. We can ask whether his driving license is valid at this moment. We can ask what is the uh, valid penalty points sum for him. Or other stuff like maximum number, like whether it's like junior, senior. You remember there was this rule like 20 points, 24 points. So this is the domain. But we don't want to focus on this too much. There was like this very good uh, Michaus talk about the DD. So now let's, what we want to do, it's go, go farther. We define our domain. So now it's time to do some orchestration. So we need application. So what changes now? As you can see, we now have domain plus application, and we have something called adapters. OK, so the domain is unchanged. It's the same as it was before. So what is in the application? Let's take a look. First, we have those ports. Uh, so f those are ports for the storage. We have the one port which allows us to get the driver file from the storage. And it's super simple. It's defined, hey, if you provide me this license number, I will give you this driver file, or I will throw the exception, hey, that does not exist. Super simple. Besides, we have also a port for storing. It takes driver file and returns nothing. Super simple. And now let's take a look who is using it. OK, so uh, we have the services. So let's take a look at the first service. So the service has uh, those ports injected in the constructor, because we inject them on the dependency injection level. And this uh, service allows us to do one thing, impose the penalty on the driver. Of course, it's using this uh, domain object. But first, it has to retrieve it, it from the storage. And finally, when it's done with changing this driver file, so the, uh, the penalty was imposed, then it's storing it. So this is the service. Now let's maybe take a look at the test of it. So this is the test for the service. As you can see, it's a unit test case. It's a simple test. So we test that it imposes the penalty and then stores it in the storage. So for sake of this test, I created a simple implementation of the storage uh, in memory. Uh, it's very, very simple. It, it has this array which contains all the driver files, and it implements both ports. And what is interesting about this in-memory driver files, it's, uh, it leaves outside of our application. Because as I said before, we don't want to have anything related to storage in our application. So it leaves in the adapters, adapters directory. So we have domain, 
application and adapters and the ports are owned by the application and they are in the application. So <clears throat> this, let's go back to the test. So we create the service, of course. We inject the dependencies. We uh, impose the penalties, three penalties here, and we accept that, ex expect that it will throw some exception, but because this is our contract. And finally, we check that uh, the driving license is not valid anymore because this exception was thrown, and we check the how many points the driver has. Of course, we can test also the edge case. The driver file does not exist, so we expect this exception to be happened. Super easy test and super easy to write. Okay, so <clears throat> we covered the services and the, the ports for the storage. So now it's time to wire our application and allow it to be used by the user. So now we will jump to another branch. And this will be this one, adapters. <clears throat> OK, config, we don't want to config. So let's take a look at the SRC. So what, ha what has changed from the previous branch now? Uh, let's take a look at our ports. So in the ports, now we have uh, two directories. Those are the same that were before. And now we have new ports here. So those are the ports that define the capabilities of our application. And let's take a look where they are used. They are used, they are implemented, of course, in the service, as I said you before. So the service is responsible for doing it, but it implements the service. So we have an abstraction over our application. So now uh, our for example, HTTP controllers will not be directly coupled to our application. They will use the application through this port. So let's take a look at this port again. And let's take a look, for example, at, I don't know, CLI command, let's say. So there is a, where is this cursor? OK, so we have the CLI adapter here. I call it CLI adapter, but you can call it CLI command. Uh, so what it does, as you can see in the constructor, we have a dependency to the port. We, ha we don't have dependency directly to the service. Why, why is that? Because it allows us to easily test this CLI command, because we can, of course, mock this, uh, this port. We don't, have, we don't have to run whole the application because in reality, what, what, is the, uh, what uh, does this CLI data? CLI command takes the input from the user, converts it to the input understand by our application, and passes to the application. And the application responds with something. And then again, this uh, uh, CLI command converts this uh, thing returned by the application to the uh, something uh, understood by the user. So let's take a look. Maybe let's close this one. So how it, how it does uh, it's when it's executing? It takes input from the user, of course. It does some basic validation of the types, because the type types are required here for the application. And here is the thing. It uses this port to execute something on the application. So this is our contract for our application. And the contract say, hey, if you do, do this, so something unexpected ha can happen. You can do something about it. So yes, we can do something about it. Why not? So we want to inform our user, hey, something unexpected happened. Here is the message. And we return the failure, of course. But in the case of success, we say, hey, the penalty was imposed, and it's success. OK, so let, let's take a look at the test, because I told you there will be some tests. Uh, here is the test. So now the test, as you can see, is not a unit test. And why is not a unit test now? Because um, 
This is the part, this is not the part of our application. This is the part outside of our application. So this is the part that can be tightly connected to the framework, to the tooling. And this, uh, uh, this uh, application which I'm showing you is using Symfony. You see, we didn't uh, mention Symfony uh, till now. So this is, how, how, this is a very good uh, example how, how this framework agnostic works. So this is a Symfony. So of course, Symfony gives you a tool to test CLI commands. There is something called command tester. So we can boot our whole application it allows us to stop our, or mock, mock in this case, mock our contract from our application. So we expect that it will call our application, this met method, with those arguments. So we set this expectation in the dependency injection container, and we run the command. So this is true responsibility of the CLI command or the HTTP adapter. What it does, it adapts the input, incoming input, into the uh, input understood by application and then handles the output from the application uh, and translates it, for example, to the HTTP, uh, uh, HTTP response, for example. So, oh, that's a good example. Let's maybe take a look now at the HTTP controller. HTTP, oh, let's, let's keep stick with this imposing penalty. So there is imposing, what time do we have? Oh, I think we have imposing penalty. <coughs> so again, we have only one dependency injection here. Uh, this is the contract for our application. Those things are, of course, passed by the routing, because this is Symfony. So Symfony passes from the routing from the uh, URL parameters, and it's expected to return the response. So we execute our application here. We pass the params. Of course, we can catch the things from the contract if something unexpected happened. And then we return to the user, hey, bad request, something wrong happened. And in case of success, we return no content. Now I want to show you how it's wired on the the I level. <coughs> we use uh, PHP configs, and this is our preference. So let's take like, a look maybe at this HTTP controller. So here we have it. Uh, we have a HTTP controller, we call it adapter, because what it does, it's adapting this input from the user to the uh, input by the application. We tag it, and we pass the service, of course, uh, by this port, and this port is defined here. So it says, if you will want to have this uh, port, you will receive this service. And this service requires uh, also uh, those ports, and those ports are defined here in memory. OK, and last thing I want to mention, because you see a name here in the ports, primary and secondary. Some of, uh, there is like a, two standards, I would say. There is like a saying primary or secondary or input output. So what is primary and secondary? The difference. So uh, for the ports, so the primary ports are the ports that are driving our application. So the user is using it to do something on our application. So this is similarity to the, uh, uh, primary actor in the movie, so he is doing the action, so he is responsible for it. So then what is the secondary? Secondary is a port which is driven by the application, so the application says, hey, do something for me, store it in the storage. So it's similar to the movies, it can be like secondary actor, so he's doing something for somebody. OK, of course, this code will, is available on my GitHub if you want to take uh, like a maybe mo more deep dive look. So now let's get back to the presentation. What time is it? OK. Uh, OK, we called code we have. So now it's time to wrap it up, everything, uh, sum it up. So 
First, we answer the question, what is the framework agnostic? And framework agnostic is just a separation of our application from the framework, from the tooling. It gives us this uh, separation of concerns. So we have a domain, we have application code, and also we have the adapters where everything is wired to the tooling, to the framework. Uh, tests, they are easy to write. We don't have like this huge setup methods. They are easy to do and they are fast. And of course, this uh, services or cases reasonably. Oh, I forgot to show you. There is like a, uh, one service is used in the C. Oh, I showed you. There was like this HP controller and the CLI. They use both the same uh, port and the same service. And finally, we are doing it, of course, via ports and adapter architecture. And here is more small shameless plugs. We are hiring in Printify. If you want to join us, do the uh, hexagonal architecture. Come and join us. <laughs> and that's all from me. Uh, sorry for being late <laughs> to this presentation. Uh, if you want, there is a GitHub. There is the source code, which i shown you. You can take a deep dive. You can find me on the internet via this handle. I'm recently most active on LinkedIn. There is also my blog where I write something. And the presentation will be, of course, available on Speaker Deck. And the uh, last thing before you leave, I want to ask you for the feedback. I think it's on this Join D portal or something like this. There is, you can leave the feedback there. And do we have time for questions? Yes, any, any questions maybe? OK. Or there is no questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speak loudly. Uh, um, I was wondering, uh, because the secondary adapter uh, was uh, storing the driver file, yes. if I remember correctly, uh, which, which was warped in finally, uh, after try. So why would you want to store the, the driver even if there was exception? Because that was uh, a rule from the use case, from this, uh, from this business. Like there was a rule when uh, the last payment is, uh, sorry, last payment, last penalty is imposed on the driver. He reaches his uh, like point limit. Then he, would, he needs to be taken to the jail. That's why the exception is thrown. So that could catch and uh, the police officers can do something about it. OK. <laughs> OK, and uh, second question, yeah. if I may. Yes. Um, how, how do you see uh, the ports and adapters uh, comparing to uh, command bus approach? Because everything that uh, was done here with ports and adapters mm -hmm. could be easily achieved with command bus because you could uh, dispatch command in the CLI uh, command or yes. HTTP yes. controller and do exactly the same, but in the handler and the handler yes. could be tested uh, just like the mm -hmm. services. Yes, of course, you can do this. Uh, we are recently started doing this approach with command bus. So uh, the interface, the, the interface to the command bus, of course, is uh, our port, a primary port to our uh, application. And uh, you can execute on it uh, the commands, of course, which are like this uh, inputs to our application. So yeah, that's a good, good point. Any more questions? OK, uh, so my question is uh, according to this first question. Yes. Um, there was uh, indeed the exceptions. And yes. I see, for example, in the comment, uh, I mean the um, CLI comment, you have used the try and uh, catch. Now, we all know that uh, using this for, uh, let's say, uh, stirring of the exception is actually bad pattern. Uh, but in that case, I think it was quite okay. So my question for you is where you see that uh, the limit, the, the, the way, the, the, the point that you can or cannot use the um, uh, exceptions, in fact, to stir the uh, logic hmm. and catch. <laughs> so uh, you ask, like, what is the limit when uh, like using the exceptions, where we should not use it. OK, those exceptions were mostly from the domain. So they were clearly uh, like from the business rules. But I, I, I wouldn't think that you should, for example, use it for like a, um, logic. 
there should be like, you can use like booleans or if statement, whatever works for you. Okay, any more questions? No? Okay, so then thank you very much and thank you for joining me in this talk. <laughs>